oh no, the 10th rather, the 10th of Elul, the 10th of September. The Lighthouse Torah Project, dedicated to Elul Nishmat, the Borafei Gabat Shemuel, Ora the Borabat Shemuel, Leah Bat Yosef, Esther Rivka Bat Abraham Alema Shalom, also for the Refua Shelema of Menachem Mendel Ben Sarabasha and Hannah Bat Shani, the iTorah.com uh, sponsor. For the Shiduchim of Nehamadina Bat Hanabatia, Eliyahu Haim Ben Esther, Rahel Penina Bat Jenny, and Sarah Simha Bat Sophie. Tomorrow, the English anniversary of 9-11, that unfortunate day that changed the face of history and mankind, and by Ezat Hashem, uh, will talk about it, uh, although it's not the Hebrew date, but I think that in this case, we can follow the English anniversary uh, as well, as I do know that many, many places will be having special prayers in order to remember that unfortunate day, which regretfully, you know, took a huge toll in humanity. But we'll save that for tomorrow, and we'll continue with the topic of the uh, Tomer Devora. So Devora, Tomer Devora discusses a commandment, a commitment, I should say, that's the word, a commitment that Hashem took upon himself to always remember the original covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. As the Pasuk says, Hesed le Abraham, that's what we learned yesterday, Asher Nishvata la Abotenu, that you swear to our forefathers, meaning to say the commitment that Hashem made with Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. So comes Tomer Devorah, we're still continuing in yesterday's message. Yesh bene adam she'enan hagunim. There are people, regretfully, that they are not the best behave. And yet, part of Hashem's kindness, HaKadosh Baruch Hu merachem al kulam. Hashem's mercy, Hashem's compassion is on everyone. In other words, not because a person may not be a good person. Hashem says, you know what? You are defected. You are a, a, a rejected a, a product. Put it in the refurbished bin. Has shalom. It says here clearly, Yesh HaKadosh Baruch Hu the Gemara writes, Borei Olam says, Osar ze behanoti et asherahon, the Pasuk writes, I shall show favor to whomever I'll choose to show favor. Who is this referring to? So the B. Moshe Cordovero says, this is applicable for those that for their own merits and their own deeds may not qualify because of their lack of good behavior. But it says here, HaKadosh Baruch Hu noten lahem matanat hinam. It says, Borei Olam, even though you may not be deserving according to the textbook, but I have so much to give, and you have so much compassion that I'm willing to give you another chance, and to give you another chance, and to give you another chance. Definitely, this doesn't work in the physical world of business. You know, how many times can a person bounce a check? How many times can the person be late, right? What happens if a person bounces the checks one, twice, three times? Besides all the fees, what they tell you, from now on, cashier check. From now on, direct deposit. What Borei Olam says, okay, I hope the check will clear. And this is part of Matenat Hinam. What's the meaning of Matenat Hinam? It says, an interesting Gemara, because somebody listening to this, can say, Rabbi, if that's the case, God has an unlimited line of credit, so what's the big deal? If I do more Averot, less Averot, more Misvot, less Misvot, so the Gemara says that is not a appropriate, that's not an appropriate way of thinking, that because Hashem has a line of credit, so I can take advantage of Him. It's like somebody tells you, why don't you pay the money to Him, What's the big deal? He has a lot of money. So what? The fact that he has a lot of money, that doesn't give you the right not to pay your loan, not to pay your bill. How will you feel if somebody owes you money and then 
you ask him, why don't you pay me? And you say, what's a big deal? You have money. Your father left you money. Your father left your building. Your father left your houses. You don't need it. Has shalom, the Gemara says, that a person should come and think that God has an unlimited amount of funds to support, and I don't mean funds in the money matter, but mercy. There is a limit. There is a gap, so to speak. And continues an interesting concept, and it says that Borea Olam, out of Hashem's infinite mercy, he always tried to find something that he can justify whatever display of mercy he had for this particular person that his behavior or her behavior may not be in the proper way. And it says that, and now he's going to say something very powerful, beautiful. I hope that, God willing, we can apply it to our life with the simplicity that he writes it. And it says, God says, Amar Kadosh Baruch God says, how can I punish this person? He's a descendant of Abraham, Ishaq, and Yaakov. And I told Abraham, Ishaq, and Yaakov that I will take care of the children. Be'imenan hagunim. And even though that the person's behavior, it is not the way it should be, but the fact that they have the heritage of Abraham, Ishaq, and Yaakov, I will continue support them. And the support means, and I will clarify, although I use words that perhaps give the understanding of a financial support, the support that I'm talking about now is that Hashem, God, lets the person maintain their lifestyle even though their spiritual behavior is not in the proper way. God could have an easy way. He says, you know what? Very simple. You want to have the lifestyle of the rich and famous? You want to keep your home? You want to keep your business? You want to keep whatever assets you have? You need to dance to my music. But Borei Olam doesn't do that. That's part of the chesed of Hashem. That Hashem says, you know what? I'm going to wait. Okay, he had a slip and fall. He had a couple of hiccups. He has acid reflux. I'm going <laughs> I'm I'm to give a chance for him to take maybe some anti-acids, teshuvah, yani, you know, repair, try to fix, try to improve, try to realize the need of changing. That's also a great start, as we learned yesterday in the English ladies' class. Today we do the Spanish one later, Be'ezat Hashem. So it says that what's, how do I transfer this godly behavior to my behavior. It's not easy. Because God is telling us, um, I have enough credit. And they come from Abraham, Ishaq, and Yaakov, that they overpaid in their dedication and their devotion and their commitment to a godly way of living. So you know what? They have overdraft protection. Beautiful. But this is God over draft protection. What about me? What about you? What about you? What about him? What about her? As a human, how do we activate this overdraft protection? Which, to understand it better, this overdraft protection means that whatever wrong someone did, that doesn't change my behavior towards the person, which is very not easy to do, but let's read the formula. Because he always writes the same sentence. Kach ha'adam. So the person must act. What does it mean? Af imif Even if a person that may encounter wicked people, ali tachzer kenegdam, don't start having this extreme cruel reaction by bashing them 
or criticizing them or offending them. You know, you are this, you are that, you are this, you are that. And in the world of Judaism, the Hachamim, through the years, changed their music. In what sense? Many years ago, the formula was to speak very strong, correct? Very strong. Today, many rabbis don't speak very strong because the formula today is to bring with kiruv, with warmth, and not with extremist views. Although there are some rabbis in the world that they speak very strong without anesthesia, and it's okay. There are people who love that, and there are people who really don't like that. But bottom line, you know, each rabbi has to do what he believes that is the right and the proper way for the masses or for the kahal. A rabbi that doesn't know the kahal, he thinks that may be helping and actually he's hurting. The Gemara writes, Le'olam yehi yemin mekarevet Usmol doha. The Gemara says a person must always use the right hand to bring people closer and the left hand to keep a distance. That was in the time of the Talmud. Today, the great Hachamim of Musar, of our generation, they say, today the generation needs warmth. The generation needs outreach. And now the generation needs that not only the right hand brings people closer, also the left hand needs to bring people closer. Because if we don't bring people closer to Judaism, through Torah, to traditions, the world outside, it is so tempting and so dangerous that anyone that will show some type of warmth that lost soul may gravitate to that kind of behavior, which obviously I'm referring to ways which are not suitable or conducive to the Torah. Ella, so it says, Yerahem alehem, have mercy even on those that are far. Beyomar, and the person should say, Sof Sof and Ben Abraham is Hakan Yaakov. At the end of the day, how can I despise my brother? or my sister? How can I dislike? How can I hate that forbid? And I use these words that we usually don't use in our vocabulary, but I think we need to understand that many times people hurt people with their mind. Not physically, not financially, and not even emotionally. Last, a few days ago, remember the morning class inside? We talk about honesty in business to every person, Jew, Gentile, male, female, young and old, mandatory. Today we discuss physical damages. Tomorrow or the day after is what? Verbal abuse, bullying, okay? All these things that defamation of character, killing someone emotionally, that is the next two days topic in the morning class inside. And by Zat Hashem, we'll talk about it here, uh, time allowing. And it says, but which in a way is telling us here, it says, at the end of the day, they are your brothers. They are Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. What are you going to gain by bashing a person? What are you going to gain by talking down to a person? You're not going to gain anything. Any, you're not, gonna, not only you're not going to gain, you're going to lose. Because if you had an opportunity to help this person, with this kind of behavior, we definitely kept the person away. And it says, In English, and in Spanish, and in many languages, not in Hebrew, in Hebrew, there are no curses. In Lashon HaKodesh, there are no words of curses. In the modern Hebrew, people invented curses by putting together 
words. But in Lashon HaKodesh, the language of the Torah, there are no curses. And in any language, when God forbid a person gets upset or a person curses another person, they call them different words and different letters. And some of them blaming the mother, blaming the father, son of. Understand? God forbid. Don't finish the sentence. I don't need assistance. Thank God. I know. Unfortunately, I know how it goes. But it's part of the people goim talk. Obviously, we as Yehudim, we cannot speak like that. We cannot curse. We cannot use vulgarity. We cannot use profanity. We cannot use foul language. Why not? Short answer. Because it contaminates our mouth. The same place where the words of Torah come from. The same set of lips that kisses the mezuzah, the tefillin, the sefer Torah. The same mouth that we say a and we eat kasher. So if we have one mouth, how much we need to take care of? So comes the Zohar HaKad, or the Moshe Cordovero, and it says, HaMebazeh HaBanim, Mebazeh HaAvot. A person who belittles or mistreats the children, meaning to say a Jew, this is going a direct insult to Abraham, Ishaq, and Yaakov. And I don't want that Abraham, Ishaq, and Yaakov should feel embarrassed by the way I talk to the children. So what do we do? So what do we do? He says something to do which requires effort. It says, Mechase Elbonam. Overlook their negative behavior. Not easy. Because in parenting, it's not a good recipe to just ignore the fact that we need to educate our children. The Peleo says, Hagadol lefi godlo, beakatan lefi kotno. Bottom line, the Peleo says, you need to use the measuring tool. The older the child, it's a different way of education if we're talking to a young child. A young child who doesn't really understand, you have to say things with firmness, not yelling, not screaming, not using the physical force. Although all these things may have been the way some people may have been educated 40, 50, 60 years ago, but today we dance to a different music. Today, right? Positive reinforcement, welcoming. I leave the lights on for you. Come and sleep at home. In the olden days, someone didn't behave. You know the consequences. Somebody told me a story about this. That one day, he went home to complain to the father that the teacher pulled his ear. In the olden days, we go, the story happened 30 years ago. And the son went to the father to complain. My teacher pulled my ear today. So the father says, not to worry. I'm going to go tomorrow and speak to him. So when the son listens to him, to the father, he's very happy. Wow, my father is going to put the teacher on the spot. So the father comes and he says, eh, More X, Y, Z, my son told me that you pull his ear. What did he do, my son, to deserve such a thing? So the teacher was telling him all the mischiefs that he did in the class. The father looks at the teacher and he says, listen to me well. The next time you pull both ears. <laughs> and the son says, what? I thought you were going to defend me. The father said, I will defend you when you deserve to be defended. But if you are mistreating the teacher and bullying your friends and disturbing the class, 
if I take your side, I'm hurting you and I'm not helping you. The son, fast forward the story, 30 years later, he tells me, now that I became a father and my kids are growing up, I wish that my father will have done it more to me. It's earlier, right, earlier. But okay, it's never too late. Um takenam kefi koho. And it says, to this type of person, try to improve them as much as you can. It's like you tell someone, listen, you need to say Kaddish, right? For example, come to the Knis, come to say Kaddish, have a few minutes breakfast, and listen a few minutes of Torah. The main highlight of the day wasn't the breakfast, wasn't even the Kaddish. It was actually the few minutes of Torah learning. But now he starts saying Kaddish, and then he comes in, starts to know people, and now listens and eats food, and kosher food, that Ba'ezat Hashem brings a positive influence on the person. The person needs to eat the sandwich, and he's not going to walk around the parking lot, Heke, with a sandwich in the hand. Or walking on the street holding a sandwich. People usually sit down to eat. That's a proper way to do it. He's eating a delicious cheese, tomato, and egg sandwich. Or peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's the menu of the day here, by the way. Very good. Looks very good. All right? Not for me, but it looks very good. Used to be bananas. Okay, budget cuts. Okay? We used to have somebody who used to donate every time he went to the Sefer, one box of bananas for the Sefer, for the Minyan. Beautiful, yeah, nice, nice gesture. Baruch Hashem, there is plenty of food. Uh, but let's continue. So the person is sitting down eating the sandwich. And then suddenly, he's getting a drop of oxygen by listening to a few words of Torah. And we have a tradition. Kosher food and words of Torah have an influence on the life of the person. Let's continue. Now, he may, you may ask the following question. How much credit do Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov has that for thousands of years, thousands of years, Hashem continues like you have no line of credit. Yani the sky is the limit. You know, you have, you have a credit card. Many credit cards have like a limit, right? 10,000, 5,000, 2,000. But I believe that there are some credit cards that they have no limit, right? Is, is the black card? The black card, okay. I don't know what a black card, I know black card. Now it's black card, okay. Now it's black card, black keeper, black device, black cell phone. Okay, so there is a black credit card, right? What's the chokhmah of that? Unlimited. But you have to pay the balance monthly. And how much it costs the membership? High. And it's a platinum, it's a heavy card, metal card. Heavy, duty, metal card. Okay? But let's say that you want to put 10,000. Okay, 50,000. But let's say you want to put, a, you want to buy an apartment with a credit card. Maybe they approve it. Maybe they will pick up the phone at least to confirm the identity of the person. But what about a Kadosh Baruch Hu? How much patience and tolerance do we have? Does he have? And again, it's not against one person or two people. It's for every citizen of the world. Do the numbers. How much is that? Seven and a half billion. Today's number. But this is not God's mercy. It's not from today. It goes all the way till the creation of the world. But I give you a, a discount. From the moment that we left Egypt. How many years between Egypt and today? 3,300 years. And, and population, it wasn't seven billion all the time. 
it grew through the generations, the number grows. And, and it's impossible to give a number of citizens that ever existed in the world. And it says, Keshetama hazechut. When the people run out of credit, and let's clarify, the zechut means the benefit for all the good deeds of Abraham, Ishak, and Yaakov. What do we do? Where do we get the overdraft protection? For example, in the world of business or in the world of checking account, many times a person has an overdraft protection of their checking account. How do you do that? One option, I'm sure you know this, you link a savings account to the checking account. Anytime there is, there, there, are, there is not enough funding to cover the checks, instead of them bouncing, the bank takes from the savings account. And this way, the check does not bounce. Maybe the bank charges you a fee. That will be possibility. But you rather pay the fee than having the check bounce, number one. If you don't have a savings account, you link a credit card account. But be careful, that's very dangerous because they take money from the credit card to cover the overdraft of the checking account and they call that cash advance from the credit card. And guess what? You pay interest daily. It's not a balance transfer like you pay from 14% credit card to zero APR for 12 months. That's good to pay to save money in the interest. But when the overdraft protection is linked to the credit card, every day you don't pay that amount, there is an interest being built. And God forbid, the financial hole could be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's a question. It says, how does Akadosh Baruch Hu continues? And it says, very simple, Zacharti lach hesed ne'uraich. I remember, God says, that you were my initial love. You were my high school sweetheart. Have you heard of this expression before? Okay, that people get married because this was the first young lady that they dated and mamash love at first sight and they continue. What is this referring to? To Hashem remembering how Am Israel followed Moshe and Aharon when we left Egypt. The Pasuk says, Zacharti lach hesed ne'uraich, ahavat kerulotaich, lechtech aharai bamidbar, be'eres lo zeru'ah. You were the only nation that agreed to accept the Torah, follow my commandments, and traveling in the desert for 40 years, a land that wasn't uh, planted or developed or fertilized or uh, being productive for mankind. And continues and it says, Ahavat kelulotaich. I remember, he says, the day of our wedding anniversary. When is the wedding anniversary of God and the Jewish people? Shavuot. Beyom hatunato, beyom simhad libo, King Solomon says at the end of the third chapter of Shira Shirim, Beyom hatunato ze matan Torah, the day that the Torah was given, ubiyom simhat libo, shemini la miluim. Remember, after the Torah was given, the Ten Commandments, the Luhot, we had a tragic incident known as the Egel, the sin of the golden calf. Later on, the Jewish people received Kippur as a day of forgiveness, and then we started to build the Mishkan. The Mishkan was going to be a mobile sanctuary where Kadosh Baruch Hu will dwell his holy presence for Am Israel. And here is the question. The Jewish people donated for the Mishkan. The Jewish people built the Mishkan in a record-breaking time. The Jewish people were waiting to see 
will God accept our mission of building the Mishkan or God still upset at us because of the sin of the golden calf? To make a long story short, the Torah answers this question by saying, by he, by Yom Hashemini, and it was the eighth day. What day was that? The day of Rosh Chodesh Nisan, the day that Aharon Kohen was appointed officially as the Kohen Gadol of Am Israel, and the day that God dwelled his spiritual presence in the Mishkan. And the Jewish people understood that Borei Olam did not get divorced from them one second. There was a short period of separation, but now with the building of the Mishkan and the inauguration of the Mishkan, God says, I'm back. Baruch, Atta Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Shehakol Mihiyah Bidbaro. It's an excellent question, and the only way that the world will be connected with Hashem will be when Mashiach comes. God gives lives. God gives the, pers the person whatever they have. And the person has Behira Hoshi. The, the person has a freedom of choice to believe in God, not to believe in God, to learn Torah or not to learn Torah, to eat kasher or not eat kasher. But we as Yehudim, so to speak, we encourage the idea of serving Hashem. Goim also have one of the seven Noahide laws to believe in God and not to believe in idolatry. But God gives a person the freedom of choice. And one of the accomplishments of Mashiach will be, that the entire world will be united in this concept. I don't want to go further into this because it's not what we are talking about. It's an excellent question, but I think Mashiach will be able to answer that with actions. And it says, Ambore Olam continues, Ahava. The love that Hashem had for Am Israel, because of this, when no one wanted me, because when the Torah was about to be given to Am Israel, the Torah was offered to every nation. Do you want the Torah? What it says the Torah? Believe in God. No, we have different gods. What do you want? Don't work on Shabbat. No, Shabbat is the best day of, in the business. Honor your parents. We don't care about our parents. Don't steal. We survive by stealing. Don't kill. That's our livelihood. Every nation had an excuse why reject the Torah. And it says, And Am Israel said, Naaseh benishma, umrahem al Israel. And this reactivates the love and compassion that God has towards Am Israel. But not only that, Let's be honest. Every Jew, irrelevant of their level of observance, the Pasuk says in Shira Shirim, Kefela Harimon Rakatech, like the seeds of the pomegranate are the empty one. What is Shalom Melech referring to? Afilush Harekim Shebe Israel, Yesh Lahem Mizvot Karimon. Even the empty, mehila, even the empty ones. What does it mean in Torah concept, the empty ones? No non-believers, non-observance. It's a difference. Non-believer and non-observance. Even the non-observance, they are plenty of misvot. They give charity. They honor the parents. They have a mezuzah at home. They make Shabbat dinner. They go to the synagogue for the holidays. Again, 
Don't take lessons from these examples. I'm, I'm only illustrating what does it mean to be a, 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 an empty spiritual person. You know, no, I go to the synagogue, Rosh Hashanah Kippur. That's beautiful. But what happened to the remaining 363 of the, of the years? How do we connect the fire on? How do we connect, keep connected? And it says not only that, Behol Hatobot, and all the good deeds that a person does. Behol Midot Hatobot. It says as well as the good behavior that a person has. And the good behavior, he says, refers to how the person functions as a human being. Not as a religious Jew. It's how is your behavior as a person. Ben Adam Lahabero, beautiful. And not only that, and he quotes here the Balatania that says that all these good character traits that the Torah expects us to have is the way that Hashem conducts himself towards us. And our mission is, how can I reciprocate this to you? This to my wife. This to my children. This to any human being that I'm coming close encounter, encounter with. And guess what? If somebody treats you well, what's going to be your natural reaction? Reciprocity. And the opposite is the same. Continues and it says that every time we treat properly another person, Hashem bounces that gift towards our life as well. That's what he quotes here, the Balatanya number one in Tomer Devorah. You have to understand, Tomer Devorah was before the Balatanya. Tomer Devorah was even a few years before Rabbeinu Ha'ari. Then came the Baal Shem Tov. And then came the different Hasidic masters. That's the reason we call in the Tanya in the Tomer Devorah. Not because the Tomer Devorah wrote it. But the Pirush on the Tomer Devorah quotes the Tanya by saying that every time a Yehudi activates this positive Middah of whatever Middah could be, could be Sablanut, could be Rahamim, could be Hesed. In other words, could be whatever Middah we have learned so far and self-control. But Olam activates that towards the person behavior as well. And it goes even further now. How do I now take all of the above 38 minutes, how do I bring it into practical life? So far, we talk about God. And someone said, Rabbi, come on, I'm not God. I'm a human being. True. Nobody's saying that you are God. We are humans. And we know that we have limitations. But that doesn't mean that because we are humans and we have limitations, it means that we cannot do something good even on a minuscule fashion. It's like sugar, okay? If you don't have sugar in your coffee, sometimes the coffee is bitter. And some people dafka like it bitter. I call it bitter. They call it coffee. So what do we do? We put stevia, truvia, whatever sweetener you use, okay? Some people want more. Some people want less. But one thing is for sure. The more we put, the sweeter it will become. Now, sweeter could be good and maybe not good. But with the proper formula, sweet, sweetness could be very good. Like salt. If you don't put salt on the soup, or if you cook without salt, it's not really going to have flavor. But what happens if you put too much salt? You can eat it. So we need to put the proper formula. And I think that this is, we are about to finish section one today of Tomer Devorah. And it says as follows, that a person, and I'm going to try to put this 
the way he writes it. And it says, Kevar hayusha'a shelo hatu. It says, for sure, even if the person, he says, that yes, he did something wrong. We agree that the person did something wrong. But I ask you, did the wrong action was a lifetime or a situation? Situation. Most of the time, we're talking about situations, not a lifetime. So it says, if that's the case, Sha'a kodem lo hatu. Meaning to say, if the incident between two people happened at 10.05, it means that at 9 o'clock, this person was okay. Or maybe the person woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Let's, it happens. We, sh we hope that it doesn't happen. But unfortunately, it could happen. Right? But what about the day before? Was the day before also a bad day? Or the day before was a better day? So it says here, Iskor lahem. It says, remember the good. Ubazeh. And if the person thinks positive about the other person, and he quotes the Zora Kadosh in Perasha Bereshit, and he says something that I mentioned before in the name of Shira Shirim, and it says, Amar Rabuna, there is no person from Israel, even those far away from godliness, She'en lahem ma'asim tovim, that they don't have a storage of good deeds. Whatever good deeds means in their life. Maybe a person is not truly observant, but has a heart of gold. Now, I'm not telling you, keep being not Shabbat observant and have a heart of gold. That's not the mission of this class. And I hope that no one gets this from what we are learning now. Here we're just finding a way of how we can still think positively about someone that in their behavior, they are divorced from God. And the idea is, as he said before, to bring them closer. To bring them closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Israel nikra'im banim lamakom, as the Gemara writes in Kiddushin, the Jewish people are the children of Hashem, even bizman shehem reshaim, and even in the time of Abodah Zarah, the Gemara writes in Yoma, that even when a Jew, God forbid, God forbid, it's involved with idolatry, the Neshama is still there. It's not that if a person does Abodah Zarah, the Neshama leaves. The Neshama stays, and the Neshama cries, and the Neshama feels drowning. Why? Because the claws of Tum'ah and that's why there is a pasuk that says in Perashah Kitavo, umaltem et orlat levavchem, the concept of doing berit milah to the heart. Usually we say berit milah to the milah. But there is a pasuk in next week's Torah portion that says, remember to do circumcision to your heart. What does it mean circumcision to your heart? Teshuvah. If milah is the extra skin. So if I need to circumcise my heart, it means I need to remove whatever blockage exists. And God forbid, I'm not talking about a blockage of the arteries. I'm talking about the blockage of the neshama. Tum'ah. That is caused by non-kosher food. That causes by physical behavior. That is caused by idolatry. And different says, and it says, Afilu bizman shem temeim. And even when God forbid there is a certain level of impurity, Shechina imahem, God says, I'm next to you. You want to ride? Come with me. That's, by the way, is being brought down in this week's Benishai concerning the loss of business. Hashem silecha. Aliyad Yeminecha. 
What's the meaning of this verse? Chapter 121 of Tehillim. Hashem silecha. Hashem is our shadow. Look at my hand. My hand has a shadow. Any place that I go, Hashem is with me. And that's what David Melech says. Shiviti Hashem legdi tamir ki mimini bal emot. Hashem is with me constantly. And therefore, even that we may say that this person is not good, maybe the person is not good. And maybe the person needs to shape up and improve. But yet, that doesn't give us the permission of not having mercy upon the person. And not trying to help them, etc. So, with this statement, it says, pray for the person. Remember I quoted the other day, I think it was the day of Rosh Chodesh Elul. We already are by the 10th of Elul, so we only have three weeks or 20 days to Rosh Hashanah. And we quoted on the first day of Rosh Chodesh, so nobody misses the opportunity to take advantage of what the Bihaim Palachi writes in Mo'ed Kol Hai. He quotes Rabbeinu Ari, and it says that in the month of Elul, in every prayer, devote a few moments to pray for those who need to do Teshuvah. Especially in the Berachof HaShivenu. Pray. You don't have to call them. You don't have to talk to them. You don't have to tell them, do this, do that. You don't have to. Just pray. Obviously, if you like to invite a person to come to a lecture, to a sauda, to a shiur, beautiful. But don't make it heavy. Don't tell you better do teshuvah, you better do teshuvah. You better. The more, sometimes to some people, the more you say, it's the worse. Right? They, they create, God forbid, a rejection. We have to encourage. We have to encourage. And pick the right time when to say things. And sometimes you can say things at not being that they came from you. You see, you need to do what the book says. Can you imagine you tell someone this? You need to do, the book is talking to you now. What did you do to that person? You killed the person. Now, it says, with these 10 days, we discuss Hashem's attributes in the world. Sheyadam dome el kono. A person, as the opening sentence of Tomer Devorah was, Ha'adam ra'ui sheidame le kono. A person is appropriate to imitate or act like their creator. And he says at the end, this is Hashem's formula of mercy. And now we clone that behavior towards us because we are the recipients of Hashem's mercy. I'm recipient of my mercy. You are recipient of your mercy. She is recipient of her mercy individually. But then we have a collective mercy that we are together, that we are in the same place, that we are able to serve Hashem properly. So it says, through this, it says here an interesting concept. We want to open up the fountains of blessings. Inside, we mention that when a person is not honest in business, and especially to a Gentile, that affects the entire Jewish people. For many reasons. One of them, because of the heavenly confrontation. The heavenly confrontation. The ambassador of this Gentile says to the ambassador of the Jew, your member stole from me. I want to collect on their behalf. What is the collection system? The Benish Hai says, Gozel HaShefa. It steals the abundance that God earmarked for the Jewish people. Besides Hilul Hashem. Continues and it says, 
in a positive way. But I'm going to use now the opposite psychology. Instead of stealing, I'm going to help him. Instead of criticizing, I'm going to compliment and encourage. Instead of being an ingrate, I'm going to be thankful. And I'm going to give the fellow a tip. Instead of complaining, I'm going to stay quiet. Instead of reacting and becoming impulsive, I'm going to exercise self-control. And it says, Tomer Devorah, every good action in behavior, Hashem reciprocates that action towards our lives. Guess what? If that's the case, the secret of my life is my own well behavior. And the headaches of my life are caused by my behavior. And my blessing in my life is by my good behavior. Let's clarify the last sentence. I'm not saying that I'm deserving. I'm not saying that I'm entitled. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, I am the responsible party of my own life. In a good way, and God forbid, on the opposite. And I clarify, I'm not talking about financial now. I'm talking about my godly reaction and my human reaction. My human behavior and my godly behavior they cannot get divorced. And that's the problem. And oh, I shouldn't say problem. But that's the mindset that many people have. I'm good at heart. Chazak Baruch. Beautiful. You have a good heart. How many? What's your blood pressure? 120 over 64? Chazak Baruch. Okay, good. That doesn't make you a good person. Although the Mishnah says that all, all human behavior, good or not good, it all depends on the heart. If you have a good heart, left of the Mishnah says, you are set. You can be born. Your parents can help you. Your education can help you. Your willingness to have a good heart. Everyone can have a good heart. Amen. Kind heart. Kindness. Warm heart. That's why you say heartwarming. Heartwarming. Varemkeit. As they say in, in Yiddish. Warmth. And it says. So therefore it says. Ali Alizu. Make sure that the Alizu. Yani don't. Divorce, don't remove this thought of the connection between the physical and the spiritual from your brain and remember them. Mikel Kamocha, Hashem Hashem, Kel Rahum Behanun. And now you need to activate a reminder. Our cell phone, right, has reminders, right? You remind yourself of an appointment, of an outgoing, remember to buy, book a ticket, whatever you write. It says, make a mental note. When any adverse situation, if the situation is good and positive, you're going to be good. You're going to be happy. So that doesn't really is the message here. Of course. All good, all happy, all positive, all pleasant. But what happens when we are faced with a different type of situation? That instead of being a positive situation, is a negative situation. What are we supposed to do? It says here, this is the moment that we need to activate whatever we learn. In the past 10 days. If it's patience. Sablanut. Letting it go. 
vatranut, that's called letting it go, to be easygoing, to concentrate on the positive and not on the negative, to try to see the goodness, to try to think of our relationship as Yehudim. And it says that our goal is to bring light into the world and not to bring darkness into the world. The world has a lot of darkness. And even though the darkness that we're talking about, you may say, Rabbi, it's a beautiful day in Florida, 90 degrees, beautiful breeze. What darkness are you talking about? I'm not talking about the physical aspect of darkness, unless it's 9 o'clock in the evening. I'm talking about the darkness of the spirit, the darkness of the world. As we discussed a few days ago, that imagine yourself if one of the Noahide laws will be that the Goim cannot speak Lashon Ara. Can you imagine if Lashon Ara will be something that the Gentiles of the world will also follow? Guess what? The world will be a better place. There will not be a lot of animosity among people. Social media will be much smaller than what it is today. Advertisement, or news channels, you know, good news, regretfully, don't sell. The last guy who opened up a good news channel after three months, he had to shut it down because nobody wanted to advertise with him. God forbid. It says here that we need to make sure to bring light in the world. One, one, how do I say this? One key ingredient of light into the world, it says, the B. Moshe Cordovero, is simcha, happiness. Happiness. And you're allowed to listen to Jewish music if you need that to increase the happiness. But what happiness do we need to have? The happiness of being alive. The happiness of Am Israel. The happiness for another Yehudi. And this is a key ingredient. It says in the commentary here that when God forbid there is no happiness, then sadness come over the life of the person. And regretfully, depression and sadness, it does take an emotional and spiritual toll in the life of the person. This is the conclusion of the first chapter of Tomer Devorah. Although the book was divided in many days, but this is the first chapter. And by Ezzet Hashem, tomorrow we'll continue with chapter 2 that discusses, in a way, many aspects of the human body, especially the face of the person. To be continued, Beli Neder, tomorrow. Baruch Adonai Le'olam, Amen ve Amen. Rebi Hananiah ben Akashia Omer, Ratza Kadosh Baruch Hu lezakot et Israel lefichach, irba lahen Torah mizvot sheneemar, Adonai Hafez lema'an sitko, Yagdil Torah ve Yadir Kaddish. Amin. 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 Yehe Shemeh Rabba Mibarach. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Helena.
امين امين